Hello, I am Hassan Nassar from the Chair for Embedded Systems at KIT. I will be presenting the paper Loop Breaker Disabling Interconnects to Mitigate Voltage-Based Attacks in Multi-Tenant FPGAs. On behalf of my co-authors, Hanna Az-Zoghbi, Dennis Gnad, uh, Lars Bauer, Mahdi Tahouri, and Jörg Henkel. Let's start with some motivation. Why is security for FPGAs is important? Well, some people believe that it is not really significant to secure FPGAs, that they are just used for prototyping and glue logic. While this is somehow true, as FPGAs were initially designed to be used mainly for prototyping and glue logic. However, with time, this has changed. Now FPGAs are used in products and exist in many different shapes. They have a high range of different types, can be used for many applications. It is also in the horizon to have embedded FPGAs and even FPGA chiplets. So as FPGAs grew, also their applications grew. And one of these applications that is gaining attraction is FPGA in the cloud. For example, Amazon currently offers the ability to use FPGAs as part of its web services. By providing mainly Xilinx Ultrascale Plus to the users, they can have their own designs on these FPGAs. And this is the setup where the attack that we have the countermeasure for can target. As FPGAs in the cloud, might be used in multi-tenant scenarios. But what is multi-tenant? So the new FPGAs have lots of resources like lookup tables and DSP blocks. And a normal user most probably don't need all these resources. For example, in this figure, it is shown the resources needed for 10 parallel instances of JPEG compression and decompression on an Ultrascale Plus FPGA. The area in yellow is what is needed and the rest of the FPGA is mainly empty. Here comes the possibility of multi-tenancy. Instead of giving access of the FPGA to a single user, it is given to multiple users. Each of them has his own partition for his own design. And this is where the threat comes, as one of the tenants can be malicious and try to harm the other tenants. This is already shown in the literature, and two of the attacks that are already shown are crash of the FPGA and injecting timing faults, which are the attacks of interest for us. But how are these attacks are performed? The attacker causes significant power fluctuation using the so-called power wasters. These power wasters can be either self-oscillating structures like ring oscillators, self-oscillating multiplexers and latches. They can also use short-circuiting like short-circuiting through dual port RAMs that write the data and its inverse to the same address simultaneously, hence causing short circuit on each bit that it is written. And based on the amount of resources and the used the frequency for toggling the circuit on and off, a crash or fault injection can occur. As the toggling frequency will be controlling how much of fluctuation is happening on the circuit and how much time does it have to recover, and also the amount of resources will be controlling how big is the power consumed by these power wasters. As for fault injection, the attacker aims to cause just enough power fluctuation to cause delay of some signals leading to the arrival of some inputs late to cause error in the current calculations. So this is an attack that can be occurring silently without any signs for the outer world. 
and for a crash so the FPGA doesn't respond and needs to be reset manually. Previous efforts were done to detect these attacks and stop them. For detection, time to digital converters are used as the power fluctuation lead to higher delay. This is sensed then by the TDC and translated in its output. Upon detection, one attempt to stop these attacks was to disable the clock of the malicious tenant. However, some attacks don't rely on a clock signal. In our work, we even implemented some versions of the attack successfully without any clock. Another alternative is to detect the attacks offline through bitstream analysis. However, the, the threshold for such detection can be either too high, so it bans non-malicious designs, or too low, that some of the attacks are not uh, recognized and can be passed to the FPGA to harm the other tenants. This gets us to our solution, loop breaker. The FPGA would be divided in a static part and a dynamic part. The dynamic part is partitioned to several partitions where the tenant's designs can reside. In the static part, we have the TDC voltage drop sensors and the array configuration manager. Upon detecting an attack, the TDC triggers the reconfiguration manager to perform a fast reconfiguration to the partition that has the malicious tenant design to stop the attack. However, this requires too much time to reconfigure, which might not be enough to stop the attack. Hence, our solution is to tailor a custom partial bitstream. This bitstream only disables the interconnects, which breaks the loop used to have the attack. It has to be extremely fast. However, that is not easy to achieve. A such a bitstream doesn't get generated automatically by the FPGA vendor tools. It is required to reverse engineer the bitstream structure to be able to have it. This reverse engineering is done manually. We did it for both Ultrascale Plus and 7 Series FPGAs. To avoid duplication, we will only speak about the Ultrascale Plus FPGA. The bitstream of an Ultrascale Plus FPGA consists of four main parts. First is selection of the partition to be reconfigured, then shutdown of the partition and disabling its interconnects. After that, the actual design is loaded, and finally the partition is deselected in order to be ready to have a new reconfiguration for another partition when needed. After identifying these parts, we built these parts each into a separate bitstream that we can use them when needed and not only to have them reconfigured sequentially one after the other. Building these bitstreams need to be careful with the needed headers, knobs, and CRC calculations. Then, we use the shutdown part to be able to have the fast disable of the interconnects. We have also built a tool to do this generation of the four bit streams, and it is released as an open source under the following URL. But how to manage to have normal reconfigurations and also the loop breaker reconfiguration to disable the malicious tenant? This FSM shows how our system functions. Normally, the system stays in the wait state. Either a new reconfiguration request comes or an attack is detected. If a new reconfiguration request comes, we configure the deselect of the last suspected tenant. Then the new tenant design is reconfigured. And finally, the suspect tenant is selected once more. If an attack is detected, we apply the loop breaker solution and then choose a new tenant. 
the selection of the new suspect tenant is not part of our contribution, but it can be done based on the bitstream analysis that was already shown in previous works. Then to test loop breaker, we have implemented it on FPGA. The large area in orange is used as an attacker region where we implemented different attack types with different sizes for the resources used by the attacker. A victim region containing a zero slack counters that can observe the faults is used. Then we have also other components like a noise generator to mimic the real behavior of having multi-tenant system and also a debugger to be able to see how the system works and monitor everything. We also use an open source reconfiguration manager called Korg to apply loop breaker and we have also an implementation of the TDC to detect the attacks. Using both Cork and the TDC we can have our system running as it was explained previously. So we have the TDC and based on a certain threshold if the signal varies by that much we trigger cork and then cork can do this reconfiguration as it has loop breaker uh, solution residing in its small RAM. Now we go to the results. First we show the worst case scenario. In this case the attacker is assumed to have the knowledge about the best frequency to cause a crash or a fault. The vertical lines show the time needed from the start of each attack until a solution can be executed. We show two solutions. First, the blanking solution where an empty design replaces the malicious design and we also show our loop breaker solution. We can see that loop breaker is 100 times faster than blanking and that blanking can stop a very small number of attacks, while the loop breaker can stop a significant portion of the attacks, but some of the attacks cannot be stopped by either of them. We also did a detailed frequency analysis for each attack. As not all the attacks are successful under these frequencies. For example, for the shown case here, at 2 MHz, no attacks can occur, neither crash nor fault injection. From this figure, we can see also loop breaker success, as there are no yellow bars that should have been representing attacks under loop breaker, but using it, no crashes can occur. We can also see that the light blue bars in comparison to the other bars are significantly low, which means that the fault injection is also significantly reduced. Finally, this is an overview of all the results collected in our experiments. It is based on 20 runs for each combination studied. And the red marked cases are the cases where loop breaker reduces the probability for the attacks in comparison to using blanking solution. And as you can see, in many cases, it is able to reduce the probability for having an attack to 0%. Finally, to conclude, when FPGAs are used in cloud, one efficiency optimization is to have multi-tenancy. This opens the possibility for having new threats like the voltage-based attack. The existing countermeasures for these attacks cannot prevent all types of the attacks and that's why loop breaker is needed. It disables the interconnects of the suspect tenant to prevent the attacks. It is also built as an open source tool to extract the different parts of the bitstream to be able to apply our solution for anyone who has the interest. 
our solution is 100 times faster than the other alternative and it greatly reduces the probability to have a successful attack. Thank you very much for watching our video.